Hi there, my name is Mary Hildinger and I'm a systems consultant with DWD Technology Group in Fort Wayne, Indiana. I would like to thank you for taking the time to view my video and I hope that it will help you answer some questions. What we're going to talk about today is the SAGE 100 2018 payroll and the use of batch processing. Today I would like to talk about a couple of new features that are included with the payroll for SAGE 100 version 2018. Uh, payroll is now known as Payroll 2.0 and it is somewhat of its own self-contained beast. It has its own payroll subscription plan, which is different than your regular maintenance plan for the rest of your software. But with the release of this particular version, Sage has implemented a number of new features. They've made the screens look a lot more modern, and they have um, updated the underlying data structures, and all of that now follows with a lot of the business logic that is used by the other modules. So what we want to do to this day is to go through and we want to use the aspect of batch processing. Um, batch processing is now available in payroll where it has not been before. And with the batch processing, you have the ability to have multiple people putting in different parts of data entry at any one time. The other thing with the batch processing is that you must include employees that are of the same pay frequency within the same batch. And so, for example, if you have a weekly employee or you've got a monthly employee, those two can't be processed in the same payroll data entry batch. They do have to be separated out. To check and see how your uh, payroll options are configured, we're going to go to our payroll module. We're going to go to our setup folder and we are going to go into the payroll options function. Setting up for batch entry is on tab number four, the entry tab. And as you can see, we've got the new um, option here that we can change and set up batch processing. So what we need to do is we need to enable this. We'll go ahead and turn that check mark on and we'll accept the change in our settings. And you'll see now when we go into our payroll data entry function, we'll get greeted with our typical batch entry screen. So you can just pick the next number or type in whatever number you want. You are welcome to put a comment here. You can make this batch private uh, and it will be treated just like any other private batch throughout the rest of the system. We'll go ahead and accept this. And as you might notice, the pay cycle screen is a little bit different now. Um, first of all, we still have our drop down for what pay frequency we need, but um, some, new we, uh, some new fields that are on here, we've got the period start date, the period end date, and the check date. And the one thing that used to be on the old screen was just the period end date. And we didn't put the check date in until we went to print checks. So I think this is really nice having this all up here and at front so you know that you're getting the right check date on your paychecks. What you'll notice here is if you enter in, let's say, for example, the pay period ending date, you might get a message about it being in the wrong um, quarter. And if that's the case, that's okay because my check date needs to be in April and that's a second quarter um, check date. And I'm actually going to change this to 2020 because that's where my test data is. And it didn't recalculate it. So I'll go ahead and fix that here. For my check date, because it is in the second quarter, I'll go ahead and plug that in. And of course, I don't get yelled at about not being in the correct quarter. We still have our options for manual checks, our taxes, the automatic deductions, automatic earnings, printing the checks, direct deposits. We have our auto pay, which uh, we can still go through and, and pick up our auto pay as we might need. I'll go ahead and OK the pay cycle here. It will prompt me, do you want to automatically pay the employees? Um, just for the sake of this, I'm going to pick one employee and show you what the rest of this looks like here. Um, with the screen now, we can see it's a little bit more modern look. 
Uh, we have the link to the employee number where we can actually go and um, maintain the employee information. We've got the flashlight here for finding um, employees currently in the data list. We can pick the next employee in the proper pay cycle. And that's going to make a difference here in a second. So I'm going to go ahead and just pick the next employee in the pay cycle. I'll pick this gentleman named Jerry Thomas. And you're going to see that the, the weekly pay cycle is identified here and that he is an hourly employee. Really, once you get past that part of it, your data entry is really going to be effectively the same as it has been previously. You'll have your earnings types and what earnings codes you're going to use. You'll have your rates and your hours, or if it's a flat dollar amount, you just specify the particular amount. I go ahead and accept, take the automatic deductions because I had asked for that on my pay cycle screen, and you'll see everything drops in pretty much like it normally does. We'll go ahead and accept Jerry for the moment, and we're going to go and take a look at another employee. So I want to pick um, Leslie Samuels here, and I want to try to include her in my payroll entry. But you will notice that this is not a weekly pay cycle employee. She's actually assigned to a monthly pay cycle, so we can't include her here. That's okay. We just go ahead and we leave and we create a new batch. If I need to, I might put monthly, just so that I know the difference between the two batches. Pick up my monthly here. Pick up my period ending date. You can see now that I get a good calculation based on the pay cycle. And I get the check date entered in and I'm all good to go. Again, I can still auto pay. I can change any of my options over here. Do I want to automatically pay? No, I'll just go ahead and pick her off my list. So even though I can see all of the employees on my lookup list, that doesn't mean that they're in the correct pay cycle for me to be able to pay them depending on which cycle I have picked. Take my automatic deductions. That looks good. Go ahead and accept. And now, when it comes time to calculate, <clears throat> excuse me, we go to our payroll tax calculation, we can actually see a batch listing of all of the particular batches that are out there. One thing that is new is we get a status here indicating whether or not the tax calculation has been performed. And as we can see, neither batch has had the tax calculation performed. But if I try to pick both of them, it will not let me do that. You must process your batches individually. So we'll go ahead and we'll pick the hourly batch or the weekly batch and we'll run our calculation. At this point now, everything is still basically the same as, as what you have been used to. And if we want to print the payroll data entry audit report, we will get a new listing of the batches and we'll see that the first batch has had the calculation completed. All of the payroll reports are now crystal based, which means we have the ability to uh, update them, modify them a lot more easily than we've had in the past. We'll go ahead and preview this. and we can see what the new report looks like. Again, payroll data entry, check it, make sure that you have everything entered properly. If I want to go on and print the other reports, the earnings register, the time off register, um, deduction register, and so on, I can only print those for the ones for which the tax calculation has been completed. So I'll come back here, I'll go ahead and grab the completed one, and I will go ahead and preview or print it or print it to paperless, however you are set up, and you can see everything as it relates to the particular earnings codes. 
Then you also have uh, all the rest of the reports, the employer's expense summary. If you print the pre-check register, you go into check printing, it's the same thing. You still would have to pick the proper batch and you can only operate on a batch for which the calculations have been completed. And then you would run the check register update and the daily transaction register accordingly. So hopefully this will give you a little bit of insight on how the new payroll batch entry can work for you. Thank you very much.